G'day folks, thanks for tuning in. Today's video is one in the series on colour theory. Today we'll be looking at white. Now we've looked at white before on the channel, with this Padme from Star Wars Legion. In that video we explored how to separate different white elements by tinting and contrasting colours and temperatures. We used warm browns and ochres as a foundation for the cloak and the boots, and a cool purple for the bodysuit. But what do we do when the model is mostly made up of a single white element, like these space marines? Well, we can actually do the same thing. I recently painted this kingpin for a commission, and you can see that while the suit reads as white, the lower shadows are much cooler compared to the higher ones, and there's a variety of hues throughout. Like black, white doesn't have to be boring, and with a bit of colour theory we can achieve a visually interesting result with not a lot of effort. Now with these marines we're going to keep things simple and work from a single foundation as we usually do in this series. We're going to go for a warm white using Van Dyke Brown, a cool white using Indigo, and just so you can see the difference, we're going to do a grayscale marine where we build from black straight to white, starting from this black spinel from Gamblin. Now this is a more expensive pigment, being a series 4, but it has strong staining properties, which makes it good for a demonstration like this, but you could easily substitute something like ivory black or an equivalent from most star sets. Now as always I want to stress that none of these choices are right or wrong, the goal is just to give you options, and to hopefully inspire you to try something new, especially if you've struggled with white in the past as I have. Now let's get started. So because we're dealing with white, we need to be extra careful to avoid cross-contamination, so I'll be using different brushes for each marine. Same as always though, a cheap craft brush that'll get our foundational layer down quickly and effectively. We'll be starting with our black marine, and are going to use him as a kind of control for the other two. We'll thin down our paint so it'll cover quickly and get into the recesses and start applying it. I've got a bit too thin here, but it's easy enough to correct. We do the same for our indigo and our brown marine, and you can see by the latter that the newer, pointier brushes are actually worse for us at this step, as it takes a lot longer to get that coverage. Unlike in previous videos, we're also going to be applying our foundational colour to the base. This will help tie everything together, as our eventual shadows will also take on the impression of reflected light from the ground. A bit more thin is also helpful here, so our paint can get down into all that texture. So I'll let these sit for 5-10 to 10 minutes so the pigments can bite a bit, while I tidy up some of the splatter. This step's going to be a lot more straightforward than usual, as our marines each only have one foundational colour on them. We take our makeup sponges, cut to size for convenience, and begin wiping. We want to apply a bit more pressure than usual, as we are aiming for white after all. We want the stain that's there to influence our next layers, but not so much that it keeps us stuck at the lower end of the value scale. Now it might be hard to believe that we can get to white from here, but bear with me. Next we'll be laying down our initial layers, using that colour theory to establish some nice grey midtones. Like before, we'll want dedicated brushes for each marine here. I've got some fresh flats that I've trimmed the corners off to make some in-house fill bits. For these initial highlights we don't need anything fancy, and a big brush will do well for coverage. Starting with our grayscale marine, we're going to go straight for white, as anything we apply is going to mix on the model, meaning we're actually going to end up with a grey. Even that thin layer of black is having a tremendous effect, but this is good, as we want to build a progression from dark to light anyway. You can see on the palette how quickly the white dulls down, so we've got a lot of wriggle room. With the brown marine, brilliant yellow pale makes for a good starting point. It and the Van Dyke brown are quite desaturated, so mixing the two will keep things warm while not completely blowing out the colour. You could add white here instead, but that would leave us with a duller brown, giving us fewer options for subsequent highlights. We're also going to use brilliant yellow pale on the indigo marine, now if you've seen my other videos you'll know that this combination makes for a nice blue-grey that we use for some metallics, so we'll use it here. While they're not complements, these two colours are close, and so desaturated that the greenish tint we get is minor compared to the overall greying down. In all three cases you can see we're a long way from white, so as bright as these are looking relative to the foundation, we're still well within mid-tone territory. You can also see how different they are when held next to each other, even though individually they might all have seemed pretty grey. This context is important to keep in mind, especially when painting an army. On their own none of them would read as particularly grey, but if you had a squad or army painted in the same way, the effect would be stronger. This will become even more apparent as we progress, so if you're painting along at home, just trust in the process. Now for the brown and indigo marines, I'm adding some radiant violet to the mix. Purple and yellow are complementary, so the violet will get us even closer to grey. Again, see how differently the same colour impacts each marine. Both are getting closer to white. And while it's cooling down the brown marine, it's still noticeably warmer than the other. As the violet's similar in value to brilliant yellow pale, we're influencing saturation more than value here. 
so I'll occasionally add just a bit of white to brighten things up. And next we're going to block in the weapons and the undersuit, as that context is going to help us better gauge where we want to go next. For simplicity's sake, we're going to do both weapons in black, as well as the undersuit. Now this doesn't mean they have to be boring, and we're going to mix our indigo and van dyke brown together to make a chromatic black, which will make things more visually interesting. This is important when doing any largely monochromatic scheme, especially the grayscale marine, as having accents of colour around the rest of the mini will help those elements stand out, even if that colour is ostensibly black. We won't spend too long here, we're just going around applying it to those areas. Thicker paint sticks to thin, and vice versa, so if you're finding your subsequent layers aren't sticking, adjust the amount of thinner you're using. We want to use fewer brush strokes here too, so that it doesn't mix in and become grey instead. Once we've got our black down, we've got a few options. We could highlight with white, but I prefer to use either brilliant yellow pale or radiant blue, again for interest. In this case I've done both, by starting with brilliant yellow pale, to try and distinguish our various black materials. Again we're just gently brushing this on, letting the raised areas catch on the brush, and the oils do the bulk of our blending for us. These parts are great for this, as the sculpts are generally quite well defined. Now if we go too grey, we can either try to blend it out, or keep going until we've got our edge highlights down before coming back in with that initial black, like I've done here on the chainsaw. Having a clean dry brush on hand to blend will make this even easier, as we can clean up those transitions in seconds. Don't be afraid to push the contrast here, as these metallic elements with their sharp edges would be quite reflective after all. We can use radiant blue for the more metallic elements, such as parts of the pistol and the teeth of the chainsaw. The difference is very subtle, but noticeable, and we can push it further by adding white to the tips where most of the light would catch. Now I somehow managed to do this, but wanted to use it as an opportunity to show you that there really aren't any mistakes with oils. We can try and address something like this in a couple of ways. First is to take a clean dry brush and try to blend it out. Now obviously that's not enough, but we are dealing with black on off white here, and it still makes a big difference. We can come back in with our initial highlight colours, and then just blow it away. This would be an absolute disaster with acrylics, but with oils, we could fix it in a minute or so. So next we'll return to the armour, and start bringing things closer to white. I'm using smaller, dedicated filberts now, as we've started to get more precise with our brushwork. As it's so easy for white to become contaminated, it's a good idea to let things sit out between applications. Even a few minutes gives the paint on the model a chance to set up a bit, and a clean brush with a fresh set of eyes will make things even easier. Same as before, we're coming into our first marine with more white, this time in a more concentrated area, focusing more on the upward facing edges and surfaces. Again the difference is quite strong, and it can be sometimes jarring just to realise how far from white we actually are. We're also using white on the other marines, where the difference is even more pronounced. Again side by side they look quite different, but the value progression is similar, which is what we're going for here. By now a healthy amount of brush strokes are built up between our layers. We always work with minimal paint on the brush to minimise this, but it's still going to happen. We fix this with a clean round brush, like these old sables. By using the side of the brush we can scumble these marks out, resulting in a much smoother gradient. We want to wipe off the brush periodically to keep it clean, but this stage is quite relaxing, and very satisfying. Any round brush will work here, as you can see by the brown marine. It's still working, but presents its own challenges, so just because you can do a thing doesn't mean you should. In my case it was laziness, but if you're short on tools, they will do the job. Now because we're working towards white, we don't have much to address in the way of shadows, but next we're going to take care of the recesses, and restore some separation of elements with washes. We can restore definition in all these panels with the pin line wash, where we take our foundational colour, thin it down heavily, and touch to the model using a long thin brush like this liner. Getting the right mix here is more art than science, so the only way to know for sure is to try. If you've seen this before, you'll know that both too much and too little thinner can result in some spillover. The important thing when this happens is not to panic, let it sit, and trust that we can take care of it. Now you could make a case for lightening the foundation a bit, if you didn't want such a stark contrast in general, or on softer areas of separation like the mohawk here, so I'm going to do both so you can see the difference. On softer areas like the mohawk, some spillover is inevitable, so just lean into it. The thin is going to evaporate out over the next several minutes, leaving something we can easily blend, but we need to give it time to do that, and if we try to correct it too soon, we run the risk of destroying our work. This can be a real test of faith, especially when working with white, and watching it bleed out like this can be agonising, but we need to trust the process. To give it the time that it needs, we're going to work next on the emblems, the trim and the eyes, 
but this time we're going to do something a little bit different. Normally at this step we do the same thing across all three marines, but I thought it'd be fun to try something a bit different and give you some more options. We'll start by mixing red with our foundation for each marine. We want to go dark here to give us something to build on and to prevent things from starting out too pink, but also it'll mean we're consistent with our shadow colours. From there we'll lay a pure red, but for our highlights we want to complement the bigger picture. So for the grayscale marine, mixing yellow into red, followed by some white, will give us a desaturated peach highlight. The indigo marine instead gets a bolder, brighter orange, with just yellow and red, and the brown marine we mix in violet, giving us more of a pink. They all work in their own ways, but my thought here was in keeping with the desaturation of the first marine, or by contrasting against the foundation of the second and third, we get a result that's much more harmonious. So this part's very straightforward. We just come in with our blending brush and tap the blemishes away. With the majority of the thinner evaporated off, we don't have to worry about erasing at work, and the amount of paint that's left behind is negligible compared to what's underneath, so we could just blend it out. Even on an off-white surface, there's very little evidence left behind, and any remainder can be taken care of with more white in our final steps. I'm going to let this one just run for a bit, as I hope you find that as satisfying as I do. There, much better. Now let's apply some finishing touches and call these guys done. Now in this final step, we're more in the refinement stage of things. By using a smaller brush, we can more precisely apply white to the edges and uppermost surfaces, and using our blending brush, we can smooth out any transitions. I find the trick with white is to both incorporate the hues of the surrounding environment, and to save our brightest white for the final highlights. While we want things to be front-loaded in terms of value, with the bulk of the piece being some kind of grey or off-white, we still benefit from some variety in the shadows to make things visually interesting, be it of hue or of temperature. But even in the case of a pure black and white subject like our first marine, we could still use contrast of value as well as accent colours to keep it from being too dull. So let me know what you think in the comments. These were a lot of fun to paint, and will hopefully make painting white or off-white feel a lot more accessible. Looking at them now, I definitely could have pushed the overall whiteness a bit more, especially when held next to each other. But again, a squad or army painted in the same way would be hard to be mistaken for anything else. So thank you very much for spending time with me here today. If you have any questions about any of the products or techniques I've talked about, or have a topic you'd like me to cover in a future video, I'd love to hear about it. Again, thanks very much for being here, and take care.